Ford Focus 2012 through 2018 Amazon touchscreen radio installation. This is my new and improved version of the video. The last one was a little bit uh, not very good. So, um, all right, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Uh, don't mind the dirty screen. Yeah, this is the radio I installed a few months ago. I'm just taking it out of my old Focus here and putting it in my new Focus. This My dad owns this Focus now, so and he's putting a different stereo in, so I'm taking this one. All right, to begin here, you're going to want to remove this factory radio, okay? On 2012 through 2014 focuses, there's a little panel you remove under here to get access to the two screws that hold this on. I believe on 2015 through 2018 focuses, the uh, panel is a little bit wider, a little more tricky to get out, but you just pop it out, and the screws are in a different spot. But uh, this is a 2012 model, so the screws are going to be about right here, I believe. And I do want to touch base real quick on the uh, radio. When you get it in the mail from Amazon, it'll come with two different plates on the bottom. One of them will fit 15 through 18 models, and the other one will fit 2012 through 2014 models. These are the tools I have. I have a little uh, flathead screwdriver. You can get a little interior trim tool. Um, I have a little ratchet here and a Torx 20. Uh, you don't need that. You just really need a Torx 20 and a ratchet. That's enough for you. Utilizing a screwdriver, I pop the little trim piece out, okay? And I think you can make out the uh, screws now. There's one. I believe the other would be down... Yeah, here we go. Right there, in the middle of the camera. You can take those two screws out. And once again, they are Torx 20. Get the other one out now. There you go. There's the other one. So at this point, there you go. Pop out. Grab up in here. Uh, use care because there is a connector you're going to have to disconnect. The connector is right here. There you go. That's it. <laughs> That's as easy as that to get the front button panel off. Now, um, if you look up in here, okay, there's uh, this is the actual radio itself. That's the audio control module. And up here, the screen also has to come out. And when you get your radio, you're going to have to swap over the vents right here. Let me show you how to do that. The vents are held in with these clips right here. See? One right there, one right there, and there. And same on the other side. You just release those clips with the little screwdriver there and pop this out and move it over to your new radio. I won't be showing the installation of the backup camera, but um, you're going to want to fasten it to a license plate screw and route the harness through the vehicle up to the, up to the dash here, and you'll just connect it to the back of the radio if you want to do that. But I will not be showing that today. I'm not putting the camera in. Let's proceed with removal of the radio now and the screen. Try something different here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the torque screw here and here. Let me zoom in for you. The two on the left and then the two on the right. Remove those four. Normally I would take these two out as well and that might make it easier to pull the radio out first, but I'm going to try this as one. Pulling it out as one. I'm not taking them all the way out with this. I'm going to pull them out by hand so I don't drop them. Okay. Okay, there's all four that's holding the display down. Okay. Well, let's try a little something here. Okay, that works. You don't have to take these two screws out. Just pull it out as one. <laughs> all right, I'm on the back here, and there's going to be some connectors to unplug. First, there's this one. All right, I released it. All right, what, what that is here is you push down on this uh, release tab right here and then turn the lever over to this position, and then the connector will come off. And then next, you have radio connection, and then you have the antenna connection. Okay, I got that out by pushing. Um, I pushed inward, pushed down on the ball, and pulled out. The little ball right here on the release, and that came out. Okay, so this is completely separated out of the vehicle now. 
All right, once you got the radio and all that out, you can go ahead and the fence swapped over. You can go ahead and prep the uh, new radio for installation. Um, don't get too concerned just yet. This is this all came with the radio, and I'll show you what to hook up where. And I'll go one wire at a time as to not be confusing. So once again, this all came with the radio. Let's uh, start with this front button panel here. See this little uh, green circuit board here that controls the uh, locks in the e emergency flashers. And I'll show you the pigtail I plugged in right here. It's got the gray wires on it. It looks like this at the end. It'll fit in right here. And let me show you the connector on the vehicle that accepts that right here. That is the connector that came off first when you pulled the radio out. That's for the uh, front button panel there. That's what you plug into that. Next thing I have hooked up here on this wider connector up top. Once again, this is the bottom where that green circuit board is. Come to the opposite end. And this is the pigtail. It plugs into right here that has all these ugly colored um, wires on it here. I don't think I'm going to leave this connected here because... The only thing I'm utilizing it for is this microphone, which doesn't work anyway. That came with it. So I'm just going to leave that off. Once again, I've already had this installed, so that's why everything's pre-wired up. And that's actually good for this video here, because I know it works this way, and this is the correct way to uh, plug everything up. If you come over here a little further, the next thing I have attached is this little adapter here for the antenna. So that goes right here, okay? And that's what the uh, pigtail looks like. Just plug, plug it in right there, and that goes onto the antenna connector. Let me show you. This is what I'm talking about right here. It plugs into that. All right, coming down from there, let's go to this one here. This is what I have connected. This is the GPS antenna. It is a long wire here. With At the other end is this box that is labeled GPS and it does have double-sided tape on it out of the box you just need to pull the film off of it and you can stick it underneath the dash somewhere I believe I had mine just stuffed down in there so somewhere where it's not gonna rub in contact and vibrate so then that one wire comes all the way up here and plugs in right there you can snug it on with a wrench just with a little bit of pressure you don't want to go overboard with that and then finally the last thing here in the box you're gonna have a harness with two connectors on it that look like this Okay, there's the other one. It should be all part of the same harness that you plug into the back here. I'll get to this in a moment here. It plugs in right here, and it comes out once again with these two connectors, and that adapts the factory connectors for the radio into your new radio. All right, now onto this blue box here. I'm not sure what it is, but you definitely need it for the radio to work. And coming off of that harness we just talked about here, these two white connectors, one goes on either side. It appears that they have a different number of wires on them, so you can't mix them up. This one's wider. It only fits in this one side of the blue box. So you're going to want to hook those up to the blue box. After that, you're ready. You go ahead and put it in the car. All right, but before you put it in, do, um, do remember you need to get your lower trim bezel on. Uh, find the one that works for your focus. Being a 2012 model, I'm going to use the one with the two screw holes closer to one another. Okay, I'm on the bottom next to the green circuit board. And if you notice closely here, there's these little black screws that you're going to have to take out. See? See where you're going to have to put them? Get this lined up over on top of them like that and screw it down. And there, once the screws are out, there is this little clip that kind of pops in right here to keep everything aligned. And uh, the screws will hold the trim piece down. Okay, I've got mine on. As you can see here, it's screwed down. And it does appear that this uh, vent on this side will kind of pop down in here. It has little provisions for that. Let's see, right there. Okay, walking into the car here with the radio. Alrighty, there's the open hole right here in the dash. And uh, here's the radio. First thing I'm going to do here is take the GPS and... Uh, the antenna here that comes with the aftermarket radio, straight down in there. Hold on, let me zoom. And let me put some lights on. Now oh, that's not going to look too good there. But yeah, straight down in the middle there, I'm going to stick this down, straight down like that. And uh, uh, some leaves on it there. 
yeah, I just kind of got it down in, you can kind of see it, I just as far as I can reach in there, just get it out of the way. Got the, uh, got the wiring for that antenna kind of wrapped up in there out of the way. I'm going to start connecting things up here. Snip. Put the car into uh, low mode there, and uh, just to give more leverage there. Not leverage, just more space to work. Alright, I got that chime turned off there. Um, it does appear on my 2012 model Focus that the only one of these connectors here I'm going to be using on the harness for the aftermarket radio will be this one here. Now there's this a uh, little bit less wide connector here, and I know my 2013 Focus required both of these connectors here, so just don't be concerned if you only have one. Um, it looks like the 2012 model just has the one connector there that needs to be adapted in. But uh, after that, I believe the last thing to hook up is the antenna. See? Snip. I lied to you guys. There's one more thing to hook up here. You see this um, connector here that comes on the uh, aftermarket radio harness here that comes with the radio. You're going to need to hook that up to the display connector. This one with the uh, lever on it. Do note that when you uh, get the radio installed and if the f buttons don't work for the locks and all that, then you could pull it back out and make sure you didn't pull the wires out because it looks like this is where the, a lot of tension is forming right here is on that. So you might have pulled the connector out by accident. This connector only goes in one way, so you can't mix it up. There you go. After that, I've just kind of got this situated up here a little bit, make sure none of the wires are going to be pinched around the edges here. Just take a look around. Do double check that none of your wires are pinched. It requires a little bit of finesse here, but uh, but uh, mine's in and uh, buttons work here. Make sure your vent shutoffs here work because you might have dislocated something while you're installing the radio. Next, you've got those two screws right here that you need to get back in. Okay, right there. There's one, and I've got one started right here. I'm just gonna get both of them in and tighten them down. Last one. <clears throat> All right, it is installed. Okay, in my uh, specific situation here, my old radio actually blew a fuse, so I have another video on the location of the fuse on the body control module under there. Um, if you need the link for that, let me know and I'll link it below. I just need to replace that fuse. And as far as basic functions of the radio go, I'm not a big radio guru guy. But I've used the radio a couple times and done Bluetooth on it and stuff like that. If you want a separate video on how to use Bluetooth and things like that, let me know and I'll do that. I do have a video on whether or not I think you should buy one of these. I already made one of those. I didn't go over too many functions of it, but I just gave my overall opinion on the radio itself. And once again, I can link that if you need it. So once again, that covers everything. That's the installation of the Amazon touchscreen radio. I picked this up, I believe on, I don't remember which day it was, but it was, I did have a special going where I paid about $119 for it, which is not bad at all. And it had, it had been working fine for me. And once again, I'm just swapping it over from the Focus I gave away because the current owner, my dad, is actually putting a different radio in and he th wanted to uh, let me keep this one. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps. There's a thumbs up right here, and um, have a great day. Good luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a fantastic day.